Hello, I'm Connor O'Kean. I play drums for Triple Kill. Uh, hello, I'm Ethan. I play bass for Triple Kill. And uh, we've got an album dropping on the 25th of August, Black and Dawn. So it's all happening. <laughs> yes, thanks for joining us this evening. I think Not a problem, us. Chris. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. So as you mentioned, Triple Kill will unleash your new album, Black and Dawn, this Friday, August the 25th. So how you feel about it? Oh, um, excited's a, an understatement for sure, but uh, also, geez, exhausted, um, and we're, we're not even touring yet. Uh, the the amount of work we've put in behind the scenes to to get this thing out is um, uh, it's a lot, you know. Um, especially especially in this last month, uh, I think we've we've put out like three music videos in the yeah. last month. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, while also practicing and and getting ready for tour, so. It never ends <laughs> in the best possible way. Um, so tell us a bit more about the album from a musical point of view and what you're going for with it. Okay, well, Heath, do you want to just start on, start us on that one? Yeah, uh, okay. Um, well, yeah, we wanted to obviously uh, advance our own skills. So having uh, that, that thing that kept us all locked inside for a couple of years uh, really allowed us to kind of take a moment, practice uh, what we've got and kind of develop some new skills or, or try some more challenging things that we hadn't uh, touched on before in, in the way of uh, at least writing something. And so this album is definitely uh, from a musical standpoint is it, something that we have uh, advanced on something, something new for us, something a bit more challenging in the way of uh, our writing. Uh, and then the themes are just things that we love, which I think Connie, you'd be good to expand on that one. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I think, um, uh, along with what Ethan said, it, we've certainly tried to have this album be a step up for us musically and and uh, in each of our own you know departments, um, uh, while also looking back at the stuff that we really like about the first album, the stuff that we feel like has st stood the test of time, and uh, expand upon on on those um, kind of hone in on the stuff that we feel like worked the most in the first album, um, and. Uh, also, I mean, again, Ethan alluded to the whole, you know, global pandemic malarkey, uh, <laughs> and it did leave us with a lot of time to kind of reflect on this triple kill thing and and what we want to do with it next. And um, the, I, I guess, validity and necessity of of what we do. We we write really um, escapist kind of fun first music, um, but after you know the pandemic and everything and after we all kind of felt a little bit at sea um personally and and collectively uh we found ourselves going is, is that enough and ultimately decided like yes escapism is is great and it's it's something that we've all gotten a lot, lot out of um so we still want to write music that's largely inspired by you know movies and comic books and video games and the stuff that we love but we we want to be able to uh accurately kind of capture or nail down that what it what exactly we love about those properties what what we thought was um what reached us you know what what we felt was vital or life affirming or just exciting about it and um have that be reflected in the in the in the music and in the lyrics um more so than the the first album i think the first album we were kind of content to just go this is a cool lyric and it's about this um, this time we kind of sat with the the why of it all a little bit more, um, and it was fun. It was it was a great way to to write. It was the first time I think we wrote with real intent, and I think it comes across so far the, in the the um, the responses that we've gotten from music uh, that we've released so far, or you know stuff that we've shown to friends. They've gone, oh, it really feels like this, or I really get the sense of this from this music, and it's like, oh my god, you know, maybe we're not hacks. <laughs> <laughs> The album opens with the title track and an extended intro that is delicate, ambient, and dreamy, like three things that Triple Kill definitely are not. So what was the thought process behind starting the album? <laughs> it's really cool. Thank you. Um, I, I think the the thought process there was um, kind of deliberately wanting to to do that, to showcase uh, a different side of us um, uh, and... I don't know, give it a, give it a go like see like hey can we can we do this and in practice we found i think we can like i we, we really like the the way that the album opens um and uh it's it's been exciting to show people little little glimpses of that side of us so far and have them 
Um, I mean, not <laughs> outwardly rejected, which, uh, which is very good. <laughs> I think I, I like what you did with it too, like because a, a lot of bands are sort of doing that lately, like they're putting something a bit left to center to start the album and then going into their normal stuff. But they do that as just like a, a minute, minute and a half intro and then go into the next song. But you actually weave it into the first song so it's over six minutes long but it's, it's a different touch too to sort of turn it into a song mm. instead of having it just a standalone entity yeah well we've done the standalone intro thing we did that for the ep and we did it for the first album um and as much as i mean uh i think a lot of the first album and especially the ep was written with in in a room kind of jamming stuff out and just going with what felt good not necessarily considering if it was uh, if the the story of the song necessitated that part being there or whatever um whereas we had a clear idea of what the first track was going to be about and the story that we wanted it to tell and the character the that is kind of uh, that rodney's singing from the perspective of is at his lowest point at the start of the song. So it kind of made sense to start there and, and then build it up. We wanted it to be like a, uh, I don't know, I guess representative of, of our own states of mind during the lockdown. And, and certainly uh, we keep saying like during the pandemic and stuff and, and that, but um, it, it, it stuck with us right up until, I think I've really only shook the, um, the emotional hangover of those couple of years in the last couple of months, maybe. Mm -hmm. um so we wanted the the start of the song to kind of reflect that but then build into something hopeful and and um uh, you know uplifting um so from a personal point of view we'll ask each of you guys separately on this one but from a personal point of view how does mm -hmm. this album um how is it an improvement on your debut oh uh ethan would you like to go first <laughs> and pass um <laughs> yeah 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 great yeah, yeah, yeah. good job good Such job <laughs> um well, uh, i mean from, from a personal perspective uh for myself when it was joining uh triple kill with the ep uh i, I was just there to kind of be like oh, i was really excited to be a part of a band again uh really excited to just kind of play the tunes and i was just kind of following along with what was kind of already written and what we had been doing as a group so it was just kind of following whatever the guitars do or anything like that whereas i'm just the bassist i'm just going to follow that when we hit on to age of rebellion uh it was more simple playing because i wanted to think about how we're going to do this live and how i'm going to be able to do be able to like do backup vocals or like keeping that simplicity there to to get myself through it when we were then with this album uh i really wanted to give myself more of a challenge. I'm good at my instrument. I'm good at what I do and I can do that live. Why, why should I be trying to hinder myself? And I, I really pushed through with some new techniques, new interesting things that I had, hadn't done before and felt more inclined to speak up and kind of put my, my thoughts and my, what I wanted to write uh, into my pieces, which I, I feel like has come off really well. And I feel a lot more attached to this album on an emotional level than I guess I had with the previous ones. Like I, I still love our previous work and I, I will forever, but uh, there's something that's just got me more attached to this music with this album. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think everybody's really um, gone that, that extra mile to uh, make sure that their individual parts were pushing their, um, you know their skill set forward oh man um well yeah fundamentally instrumentally it's it's uh it's the best stuff we've ever written um and uh i think again coming back to that writing with intent and that intent being kind of uh at, at like sticking the landing for the most part by the the sounds of it um I, I think that's something that the previous album just didn't really have um the the intent was uh fundamentally just like hey this is fun we hope it makes people move um and it, it it did that but anything else i think that people got out of the music it was like not necessarily on the page you know um which is that's that's half the fun of releasing art is, is seeing what other people get out of it um but yeah this time a, a more concerted effort was made to capture something about each of these these properties that we like um, and make sure that that was in the song um, and was on the page. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm 
proud of that um, for sure. That's that's something I, I'm excited to take into the you know future releases as well. That kind of mindset and that approach. Very cool. And you guys also recently supported Night Flight Orchestra in Melbourne. So how was that? Insane. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah man wonderful so wonderful um i mean we already had tickets as as fans of the band to yeah. just see that show anyway um so when we got the email we were all like giddy with excitement um to be supporting you know let alone direct support for them yeah um yeah yeah ethan do you do you want to add anything uh, i mean it was it was just like it probably one of my highlights uh for being in this band is just getting to a mm being able to have played the show uh, and then getting praise after like having the the drummer of night flight orchestra come up and sit like just sit there with me for a good like 15 20 minutes as we were just talking back and forth about like what he was doing with the tour and stuff and then he just had nothing but just really nice things to say he was apparently like he was up the back upstairs of max watts and he was just watching through the curtains uh for everything that we did and he just loved our energy loved what we were doing and he he said it, he felt like uh, he was a part, like he was a part of the crowd, and I was just like, "That's mm. that's the nice stuff that I, I, that's going to sit with me forever." Yeah, really exciting. Rod Rodney was riding high all evening. Um, after we came off stage, he was you know wrapping some cables or whatever, um, <laughs> wearing this <laughs> Elvis costume that he's been uh, that we we had made for one of the music videos. And um, Bjorn comes up and like taps him on the shoulder. And is like, "That was really good, man." And Rodney thinking it was just you know. Uh, crew or, or one of our mates or whatever turns around and is like hey thanks man <laughs> like <laughs> starstruck and um like yeah it was really really riding high on on that uh for the rest of the night and and on a on a personal level as a personal note like it was just really uh wonderful having so many friends and um you know punters and and family there as well i had uh two of my younger sisters there one of which uh, only turned 18 um last year so this was her first time seeing me perform live and she also happens to be a huge night flight fan this was a band that we shared uh listened to music in the car over lockdown and stuff when we go for like you know a drive within the 5k radius um we chuck night flight on so this was like real special on on every conceivable level fantastic that was well done and now you're about to head out on the riff and tour with this uh, good mate Scorpius omega that kicks off in Ballarat on August the 25th before going through Gold Coast, Brisbane, Canberra, Sydney and Melbourne and fit or Se Sydney and finishing in Melbourne on September 9th. So it's a decent run of shows. Yeah, yeah, real decent. Um it's it's a weird one. We do like the one date in Ballarat this Friday and then have nearly a week off and then it's like four days back to back and then a week <laughs> off and then Melbourne. So it's uh it's going to be good. Wrapping up in Melbourne I think feels feels right. Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited to end, like starting it in Victoria, like starting in Ballarat and then ending in Melbourne just feels like a, a really good way to run this tour. Mm. And, what and it means we'll have worked out any kinks by the time we get to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> and what can you fans expect from you from those shows, guys? Ethan, do you want to? I mean, look, we've got, uh, we're playing in the Gold Coast for the first time. So I feel like we're going to have a really high energy show going to happen there just to make a really good first impression there but uh in the way of this tour we've got uh, a stack of new songs that we've not played live to an audience before so it'll be really nice to get a couple of these tracks out and let people experience the the theatrical state that we're gonna be providing these songs and uh i'm I think i'm quest fest is gonna be a uh gonna be an interesting one uh i personally just had my costume show up this evening for oh, Quest Fest oh, in Canberra, Melbourne. And, uh, oh my God. <laughs> Hang on. Have you got a handy? No, so it's this <laughs> giant inflatable pig. <laughs> yeah, boy. And, uh, that's going to be fun to play in. Oh, excellent. So we've got something exciting to show people. Yeah, very exciting. And, and I would say, like, um, uh, I mean, like Ethan said, we're going to be playing a bunch of this material that we've never gotten to play live before. Um, but that's not to say, like, oh, it might be a bit shaky. Like, these shows are going to be a celebration of the fact that we've got here and, and we're getting to play this music and share this music with people, finally. Like, 
uh, it, it's just going to be wonderful. And I think I think people are going to feel that the moment they walk into the room. Um, we're going to try and bring that the moment we hit the stage. Um, we want people to feel that 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 sense of celebration and to feel appreciated and valued as punters. Um, we we will go out of our way to make sure that that's apparent. Awesome. And where can people get tickets for these shows or find out more information? Uh, I believe we've got tickets for all of these shows on yes. the Bandcamp, on the uh, triplekill.bandcamp.com. That's right. We've got all tickets uh, currently discounted on our Bandcamp, so you can get them for a bit cheaper coming straight through us, uh, and that'll have info for all our shows, as well as the new album and some sick new merch. Mm, yeah. That's awesome. Well, before we let you go, I've started three new Spotify playlists through Heavy just based on songs from people I've interviewed. So. Using songs of your own, I want you to give me one song that's going to get the party started, one song that's going to save your marriage, and one song that could potentially end your marriage. Well, from from our album or just <laughs> from, from any 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 of your albums, it has to be one of your songs, though. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, a song to get the party started, Ethan. Do you, do you want to pick that one? You're the you're the party guy. Well, you've got those w loud shirts. Surely that's yeah. Well, the, 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 funny enough, the, like so, I I have these. I have this one very specific loud rainbow shirt. Who's got this <gasps> image of uh, mm. He Man just printed on him? So if I was to pick one song to be like, what's the song to get the party started? It'd probably be Weight of Eternia on our new album, which is just about uh, He Man, the Masters of the Universe. Yeah, yeah, love that. Uh, I I would say so. The song to save the marriage is that the next one. Song to save the marriage. Song to save the marriage. I would say "Dust," the uh, single that we just released, and the final track on the album. It's got a, an overall hopeful message, uh, uh, one of you know trying to remain present, uh, and I think you know that can that can be something to remind ourselves to do when things seem dire uh, in a relationship or otherwise. Hey, that could help. I'm not saying it's going to save the marriage, but it, it could hurt. <laughs> it could help. You know, it'll help the conversation. <laughs> It'll be a story, you know. He 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 begged me not to leave and started playing some man from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, I left. <laughs> well, here's your chance to pick one that could potentially end the marriage. Well, uh, uh ooh, um, oh, come on, let's 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 go with where it started, Blades. If you're playing a song about <laughs> Beyblades to someone in an attempt to save the marriage, it's I guarantee you, it's not going to help. <laughs> But babe, don't leave. We've got to let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Guys. Thanks for being uh, such a good sports about that. Your album, Black and Dawn, is out on August the 25th this Friday. And I'd listen to it before this interview, guys. Really well done. Quality piece of um, quality slate of music. So hopefully I'll be... Oh, thanks so much. Show thanks so much, Chris. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Sure. We really appreciate your time, man.